here with uh, David Strain, my good friend, uh, senior minister of First Presbyterian Church in Jackson, Mississippi. And I'm Jason Halopoulos, uh, pastor at University Reformed Church in East Lansing, Michigan. And David, we want to talk today. You and I have been part of a company of pastors for the last couple of years. And I wonder if you would give us some insight into how that start and, and let's just talk about the benefits we've seen from it. Yeah, so you and I and a few of the other men in that group were friends. I think we all had connections with one another, though not necessarily with everyone in the group. Yeah. And it may have been inevitable eventually that we would all have connected in the way that we did. I think you were actually the one that, that helped push us over the edge there and, and, and sort of finally brought us all together a little more formally. Um, several of us had known one another through ministry, through things like the Twin Lakes Fellowship, uh, through the denomination we served together. Um, and I think you recognized, because you're a good pastor, that pastoral ministry is hard, it can be lonely, and it's challenging. Yeah. Um, and it brings with it some unique burdens that are oftentimes only really fully understood by other pastors. Yes. Um, and we need one another, and we need more than just the passing stolen moments when we can grab a coffee here and there at events and so on. We need thoughtful, purposeful time where we can pray for each other, encourage one another, listen to each other, be a source of strength, resource to one another, yeah. uh, help on practical issues. Um, and, and it's been, for me, it's been an invaluable uh, tool the Lord has used to help me grow in grace. It's humbled me, it's often rebuked me, it has been instructive. Sometimes we deal with a very practical issue yeah. and, I, and I learn a good deal from the men in the group. Because we will have uh, monthly phone calls where we do a, a go to meeting thing on the internet and we'll right. kind of be able to see each other's faces. And right. We, we spend an hour together, just an hour together, yep. each month like that. Uh, we usually just throw out some topic. Somebody from the group gets assigned that they're going to bring a topic for the rest of us to discuss. We usually do that for a half hour and then for a half hour we update one another about how we can pray for each other and yep. encourage each other. I, I find that one of the ways that encourages me is that I know I have eight brothers, seven brothers that are praying for me yes. around the country. Yes. And uh, we will often text each other prayer requests. Right. What was it one of our uh, brothers said the other day? We, we also text a lot of jokes every once in a while at each other's expense. And one of them was, uh, he got back on and said, I just took a shower and there are 80 texts sitting right. here for me. Yeah. Right. So it's just a but way to connect with each other. And that's been really sweet to see. At first, you know, we didn't all know each other equally well. Yeah, yeah. And so it is a little artificial. You're, you're requiring one another to engage on a subject and be open about ministry and for a group like this to work we've got to be willing to take the risk it's good to be real with each other yeah. um, but because I think there was already enough trust and enough awareness of of one another we were able to do that and very quickly we found that that it became less and less artificial and more and more real and that's witnessed as you say by the texts and the communication that happens in between those programmed and planned calls where we're in each other's lives, we're following up, we're carrying each other's burdens, we're aware of what, what's going on in ministry, um, often turning to each other and saying, this, this tough meeting is coming, or I'm, I have this family situation, or yeah. I'm struggling with, will you pray? Yeah. And we can, like you say, we can be confident of uh, eight brothers who are pleading with the Lord for us. And look, in our group, we've seen multiple men go through transitions, you know, right. like hard transitions or hard things. Be able to talk about those together and pray for each other. Right. I think it's also helped that we, we get together. We try to get together absolutely multiple times a year. We do a one one time retreat together each year for two or three days. And then we always get together at General Assembly and then try and meet up at Twin Lakes Fellowship. And just that face-to-face -face interaction has helped our group yeah. too. We get to laugh a lot. Yes. We get to eat a lot. We get to eat a lot. Yes. Um, my wife would say <laughs> too, too much. much. <laughs> uh, we, we, right? get, we enjoy each other uh -huh. and we get to follow back up and 
continue to probe and press and, uh, and, and encourage each other. And that face-to-face -face time, I think, has, has been the critical component in moving it from yet another call I have to make in my busy schedule to something that I really look forward to and need and value in my, in my life in ministry. Yeah. I'm thankful. Thankful for you and thankful for the rest of our brothers. You too.